peanut butter and jelly, the ultimate PB&J ever made. Today we are making the ultimate PB&J sandwich all from scratch. We are gonna make our own peanut infused protein bread, our own jam, and our own low calorie, high protein peanut spread. So this is gonna be a giant PB&J sandwich that's high protein, low calorie, and absolutely delicious. And it starts with four egg whites without the yolk. We cannot make peanut infused protein bread without this, so let the whipping commence. And when the sticks are out, it's leg day. But before you start beating, you gotta start heating 350 degrees. Back to leg day. We added a pause this time. I separated four real eggs to make this. I took the yolks, I don't know where they went, but the whites are in here and they're whipped up, but they're not stiff yet. They're soggy, it takes time to get stiff. So we're gonna add some cornstarch and not sugar. One tablespoon of cornstarch, which is 10 grams, and then two tablespoons of erythritol, 24 grams. Erythritol comes from grapes. It says it on the package, I'm believing it. We are not gonna use grape jelly because that is the worst jelly to use in PB&J. I don't want cough syrup in my sandwich, but since we are making a PB&J, we're just gonna use sweeteners from grapes. And also a pinch of salt. Whip. It's so stiff. You can do that. So you're good to go. That's when you know your cloud is ready and it's ready to be infused with peanuts, which in this case is gonna be PB2. This is pretty much peanut flour. It's powdered peanuts. You know exactly what it is. You take a peanut, you take the peanut oil and you send it to McDonald's and then you take the rest of it and you put it in this jar and you have protein peanuts. We're gonna take one tablespoon, which is six grams of peanut powder and we need a sifter. We're gonna sift it on here and then gently whip it in we want to sift it because we want all the peanut grains as fine and as spread out as possible. So this is its pretty important. If you don't have a sifter, it's okay. No one's gonna be upset if you have a clump of nut in here. Give it one of these. And when you have a nice peanut dusting all over the top, just fold and then keep dusting. And once your peanut powder has been dusted everywhere, you wanna use some psyllium husk powder. This gives you that chewiness that you get in bread. It also adds fiber to this and makes it so much more satiating. A teaspoon of the powder, which is five grams, just sprinkle that on. Give it a few gentle folds to mix everything. We're gonna put this on the low speed and give this a quick mix just for a few seconds. That's it, it was 10 seconds of mixing and that's all we need. My oven's gonna sing any time now, so get yourself some parchment paper and start making a giant piece of bread. <whistles> 350 degrees, my oven is singing. It's excited, but not as excited as me. We got a whole sheet of peanut infused cloud bread right here. I'm just squaring off the edges. And then we're gonna need two slices of bread, one for the top, one for the bottom. This isn't gonna be an open face sandwich. So try to eyeball the center, eyeballed, and then gently cut your cloud in two. And then that's all you need. I didn't know clouds taste like peanuts. 350 degrees for 25 minutes. It's time to bake. And while that's baking, let's make some jam. We are gonna use some real fruit, but also some fake fruit. How? 
First, we're gonna take one cup, which is 140 grams of frozen strawberries. You can use any berry you like, but I'm a strawberry jam kind of guy. Put it in a microwave safe dish, and we're gonna microwave this for 30 second intervals. It is softening, but there's still ice on it. Another 30 seconds. After the second 30 seconds, you got strawberry juice on the bottom one more time. And there we go. We got some juicy strawberries in here. We want to discard some of the juice because there's just too much. A lot of this is just the water because it was frozen and it's icy. If you use fresh strawberries, you're not going to have this much juice in the bowl. So drain some of it. So after you drain it, you have a lot less strawberry juice remaining on the bottom. So to this, we're going to add two things. We're gonna add some sweetener. This depends on how sweet your fruit is. So if it's already really sweet, you might not need any. If it's not that sweet, you're gonna need a whole cup. I'm kidding. I'm gonna use two teaspoons, which is eight grams. And then I'm also gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon of psyllium husk, which is just one gram. Why the psyllium husk, you ask? What are you doing over there? Well, it's gonna really thicken this up and give it a jam-like consistency. Trust me, it works wonders. A high fiber jam with frozen fruit and some psyllium husk, that's all you need. Start mashing this up. I just use a fork to mash this, but if you like a super smooth jam, you could put this in your blender. I kind of like a chunky jam. So now all we have to do is microwave this until we have enough of the water evaporated so it's our desired thickness. 30 seconds at a time, and every time just look at it and see if you want to microwave more, but keep microwaving it until the water is evaporated and it's thick. I had to microwave this for two and a half minutes, which is five rounds of 30 seconds. Don't just put two and a half minutes and walk away. It will literally bubble up and explode just like oatmeal. So be careful, keep an eye on it. But there we go. It is way thicker now. If you have a problem with the thickness, you could always just add a little bit more psyllium husk until you get the thickness you like. But as it cools, it's gonna get thicker. But that jammy consistency is there. And I also like to add one tablespoon of a regular sugar-free jam. It's only 10 calories, but the raspberry plus the strawberry combo takes this to a whole nother level. You can mix and match any fruits you want, but just take one tablespoon of that regular jam, put it right in, and then just mash it up and stir, and then give it a quick taste. My sweetness is perfect, but if you like your sweeter, add some sweetener. But I think this is absolutely perfect. If you're short on time, put this in the freezer. If you're long on time, put it in the fridge, but we want this cool. But our bread is baking and we gotta move on. We have some protein peanut butter to make. I'm sorry for that sound. Glass on glass, I gotta be careful. It, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Gentle. Take three tablespoons of powdered nut and put it right in. That's 18 grams. And then 30 grams of non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Some people say this stuff tastes like poison. Have you really tried poison? No, because you'd be dead. This stuff tastes delicious. Two tablespoons of Greek yogurt and 15 grams of sugar-free maple syrup. If you don't have sugar-free maple syrup, you can use regular maple syrup. Close your eyes and pretend it doesn't have too many calories. One tablespoon in here and one tablespoon and then six more tablespoons in here and now we mix we already added powdered nuts to this but we're going to give it a splash of liquid nut just to get the right peanut buttery spread consistency and mix until you have something that looks thick and creamy like this and don't eat it we need to save it for the sandwich. Oh my God, guys, I almost forgot the salt. Salt your nuts, please. Twenty-five minutes later, our bread is ready. 
Foil doesn't get hot, guys. I don't know why. Peel this off the parchment paper now. This is the one thing that gets harder when it's colder. Just flip and peel. Easy. This smells so good. It smells like peanuts, but bread. Two slices of peanut protein bread, baby. Look how beautifully our jam has thickened up. It is the absolute perfect consistency. Strawberry jam is absolutely the best jam. Not even a comparison, not even a question. You can't argue with me on it, it's a fact. Our protein peanut bread, one slice down. If you're worried about my counter being dirty, guys, it's building my immune system, don't worry. I'm kidding, I cleaned it. I got a big thing of wet wipes right behind the camera. Wipe the whole thing down. Our peanut butter, so creamy. If you like chunky peanut butter, sorry. We're only having creamy today. Put a big spoon on and spread. And get your other piece Flip it upside down, put another spoon of peanut butter on, and spread. We want peanut butter on both sides because the jam is going to go in the middle. Is this how I made it as a kid? No. I would put peanut butter on one side and jam on the other, but is it the way I'm going to make it now? Yes. Time to jam it up. This is it guys, got the coffee. Wanna know my order? It's from Wawa, but you could do it at Starbucks or any coffee shop. Caramel sugar-free, almond milk to top. That's the order, but that's not important. This is peanut butter and jelly, the ultimate PB&J ever made. And it's ginormous. Guys, cut it into triangles. That it, I needed to say that before taking a bite. If you cut it into diagonal squares or rectangles, you're a psychopath. It's nuts. See what I did there? I'm telling you, the bread is like Wonder Bread. So soft, so tasty, but packed with flavor with the peanuts. But it just pulls apart. So soft. And that homemade jam. It'll keep you full. Wow, I just love PB&Js. They remind me of my childhood. Coming back home from school, slapping on real peanut butter, real jam on some bread. And after I finished the PB&J, I'd go back to the jar of peanut butter, take a spoonful, and then it was time for dessert. Right next to the jar of peanut butter was a jar of Nutella, spoonful. Then I got fat. but not eating this. You're supposed to have it with milk, but that's why I put almond milk in this. It's dripping the side of a good PB&J.
I'm demolishing this thing. That jam that drips, mop it back up. That little bit of extra powder of peanuts in the bread takes the flavor to a whole nother level because anytime you get just a little bit of extra bread like this, you taste the peanuts. The best bite of a PB&J is not the crust, it's the dead center that has the most amount of peanut butter and the most amount of jam. Best bite, gone. It's dripping. And so am I. Have you ever been able to eat a PB&J the size of a plate for 300 calories and almost 30 grams of protein? Yes, because you'll make this. Thank you so much for watching the video. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you in the next video.